If you're in your mid 20s and early 30s, you need to understand one thing about your wealth potential. And I'm gonna give you three ways to develop it. The one thing is that building trust among your friends is the best way to accelerate building wealth together. Through pooling your money and using leveraged opportunities, you can secure financial freedom for everybody involved. So build trust between your friend group when it comes to money by doing these three things. First, talk about it regularly. See what everybody thinks about money and where their discomfort is when it comes to investing together. Second, do hard things together. Hit the gym, serve together, develop skills together, reinforce depending on each other when things get hard. And third, set a vision. Where does everybody want to be and how do we want to do this together? What's our timeline? How much effort do we want to put in during the process? When you understand that trust is the foundation of money, you can use those three methods to start building wealth with the people around you. Now, you might be asking, why do I need to do those three things to really get the thing going with the money and the community and the community investing and all that? But first, we wanna go over why leveraged opportunities. So, you could all pool your money together and you get 10 friends and our 10 total of you and you can put a thousand a month into the S&P 500, 10,000 a month between all of you guys. And if you put that all into the S&P 500, reinvest the dividends, you would produce a return. But it would be the same return as if you invested alone. So how do you actually unlock wealth by investing together? Well, you need to access leveraged opportunities because you can put 200,000 in the S&P 500 or you can put 20,000 in the S&P 500. It's gonna give you the same kind of like 16X return in 30 years or whatever it is, which is fantastic. But you can invest a loan to do that. With leveraged opportunities, you can take that same 200,000 and you can buy a piece of real estate for a million. And that million dollar property will go to two million, three million and spit off cash flow that helps you to buy more properties. Your $20,000 cannot buy a $1 million property. In 30 years, that property will be paid off as well as the other properties that you purchased from that activity and your wealth scales significantly. You unlock opportunity because you leverage opportunity. So you can also do that with business. You know, with $200,000, you can buy a business that's worth $2 million, which means it's probably spending off 600,000, 700,000 a year in cash flow. And in five years when that's paid off, your $200,000 investment is now spinning off 600,000 a year. So that's why leveraged opportunities. And once you realize, hey, we're doing the leveraged opportunity thing, we're gonna do this as a community, we're gonna invest together, you need to do a few things. And the first one is talk about money. Now we talked about this earlier, but when you're having that conversation, what does it look like? I would say you're going over three things. First, limiting beliefs. For example, a lot of people believe that money is scarce. A lot of people believe that the only way to get money is by working for money. They don't understand leverage. They don't understand opportunity. They don't understand passive income. So there's some limiting beliefs that you need to address around money. A, it's abundant. B, it's created every day. C, it is all around us. D, there's more than enough of it for everybody. After you address some of those limiting beliefs and get evidence that supports the new abundant beliefs you've created. And again, limiting beliefs, it starts with awareness, understanding, non-judgment, and then redirecting the energy. It's not that it'll go away completely, but it's that you'll redirect the energy. And speaking of redirecting the energy, you're gonna have to dive into some of that discomfort because behind the limiting belief, it's charged with emotion. And so understanding that discomfort of like, hey, why don't I trust people? What do I actually think about money? It all goes back to those limiting beliefs. Your beliefs lead to your thoughts, which lead to your feelings, which lead to your actions, which lead to your results. So as you start to realize where you're uncomfortable, what you think about money, and you tie that back to a limiting belief, you get awareness of all that, you can start to redirect it when you um, back your redirection up with facts of like, hey, this is how wealthy people actually get wealthy, so I'm gonna start doing these things. And so that's kind of the mindset around money, talking about money, how do people feel about it, how do they think about it, what do they believe about it, what are their actions, where are their actions going to take them? regarding it. Once you clear that up, it's time to start doing hard things together. So again, awareness, understanding, non-judgment, redirect towards abundant beliefs. When you do get those abundant beliefs going, you need to start to do hard things together because you need to know you can depend on one another. And these hard things in my head look like, A, serving together, going into the nitty gritty of society and loving people. That's hard. It's hard to build intimate connection with people, love them, 
together. Going to the gym together. Lifting weight is hard and preferably you do it early because it's hard to wake up early, it's hard to lift weights, and it's hard to do it consistent. So when you're doing these hard things together, make sure the number one thing is consistency. We're serving together, we're going to the gym together, we're trying new things together. Pick one of those three or all of those three and start to do it together. Because then you'll start to realize that the people around you, you're spending most of your time with them. They are now your best friends. You now make money together. And then when you're all financially free, you can go to the beach or start a compound or whatever you want to do. And you're doing that with your best friend. So again, do hard things, talk about hard things. So you talk about hard things, you do hard things. Once you got that kind of good and the foundation set there, or at least you have the system, it should really take a day or two to identify some of those limiting beliefs because you can kind of look up common limiting beliefs around money and which ones you resonate with and which ones your actions say you resonate with. You can decide to do hard things together. Start small. Don't start going to the gym 30 hours a week. Be like, hey, we're going to go 30 minutes a day, four times a week. And on the other three days, we're going to eat a meal together. Just that. Just be consistent with that. So you've addressed those limiting beliefs. You've set up the framework for doing hard things together. And you've done that in a day or two. And limiting beliefs will need more work. Being consistent will need grace. But you need to set the vision now. What are the cash flow goals? What are the impact goals? And what are the work-life balance goals? I think it's really important here that you encourage each other to think big. You've already done some work around limiting beliefs and you will continue to do more work on limiting beliefs. You will think bigger and greater as you become bigger and as you become greater. But set the cash flow goal, say your initial number, and then 10x it. Maybe you need $8,000 a month to pay for your family. Shoot for $80,000 a month for everybody in the group. How would you get there? What type of businesses would you buy? What type of real estate would you buy? How much would you invest? How much would you reinvest? So that's how you kind of start getting those cash flow goals, those impact goals. What problem is close to your heart? Go touch people that are experiencing a problem that's close to your heart and impact them. Be like, I'm going to impact 10 people in the next year or in the next 50 or the next five years or 10 years. I'm going to impact 20 people that are in, uh, experiencing this issue. 10x that goal, 200 people, 2,000 people, 20,000 people. How much cash flow do you need to do that? Now you maybe need to tweak your cash flow goals. So you tweak your cash flow goals, tweak your impact goals, be like, what problem do I want to solve? Who experiences that problem? How many of them do I want to impact? 10x. How much cash flow do I need to do that? How much cash flow do I need to get financial freedom? 10x. Just to expand your mind. Then the work-life balance goals. I only want to work 25 hours a week. I want to spend the rest of the time with my family or on my fitness or doing leisure kind of sport activities that are competitive. If that's the case, you know that you need to get all your work done 25 hours a week. So what are the high leverage activities that you can do that will kind of set you up to hit your cash flow goals, hit your impact goals, and only work 25 hours per week? So now you have a, a kind of method to start formulating a plan, and that's where I would start with all these conversations. Address the hard kind of beliefs, feelings, and thoughts about money, then start doing hard things together, and then start going after a vision together where you're cash flowing, impacting, and loving the people around you. So that's what we got for you guys today on the show. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you on the next one. And remember, we are a community of people judged not by our wealth, but by our impact.